So I'm sitting here. Now I have to figure out how to embed this fucker. <laughs> okay. So I'm live streaming and uh, I've learned two things in the process of setting this up. One, I make really weird faces at my computer. That's very strange. Two, I can hear myself talking so now I have to figure out if I can mute and also hear myself or if that's not happening. Oh, that worked, awesome, okay. So I'm here to hang out with y'all in case you need a safe space to go because shit is bugging you. Because, you know, today's a pretty stressful day. I'm a little stressed. Um, I'm also home and my kids are home. My husband's home because the entire area around DC is closed and schools are closed. Everyone's fed and I already put in laundry. So I figure let's hang out. And if no one hangs out with me, then I'm going to really entertain myself. It's going to be awesome. 
okay. So, I'm watching myself talk. It's really distracting. I gotta turn myself off. <laughs> All right, let me pop out, pop out. If I pop out the video thing, such a professional, so professional. Okay, and here we go. Hey. My nine-year-old really wants a YouTube channel, so I have a feeling that if my kids come upstairs and I'm like, okay, if you come in the room, you're live on the internet, one of them will run the other way and then one of them will be like, yes, I have my own YouTube channel, except it's my YouTube channel. So here I am, ready to perform the live streaming, which is kind of, you know, eh, let's see if this works. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is safe spaces. Um, I am not allowing myself to go on Twitter today as much as I love Twitter. And if you find that you're doing something that's really making you unhappy, you're in most cases not obligated to do it. So if you're super miserable and stressed out and worried and scared, um, I have book recommendations. Are you, are you cool with that? I am super cool with that. All right. So I will show you because I'm such a dork. I actually keep my recommendations in a notebook because as I said in a podcast that I think went live today, I'm actually worried about my list going public, so I actually keep them in a notebook. So my reading list is uh, pretty intense. So here's what's on my schedule this month. Okay, first, you know what I should be doing is pulling these up because I'm a big idiot. Can you tell I didn't plan this? I did not plan this. I am working on zero planning. Someone's watching this and is like, wow, this is the worst live stream ever. All right, so the first book I want to tell you guys about is by Ishara Dean. That's D-E-E-N. And it is called God Smites and Other Muslim Girl Problems. Hang on. So this is a Muslim Nancy Drew, which is how it was pitched to me. And if you're like me, you heard those three words and went, I'm here for this. So the young lady who's the protagonist, it's told in first person, if first person is not your thing, she has a volunteer job and her mother is super overprotective. Uh, and she's pretty sure that she's ready to break out of that overprotection, but not entirely because she can't. And then she um, finds a body. Oops. So now she has to figure out what's happening. And I started it and it's really, really, really awesome. I can't wait to finish it. You should totally read it. So God Smites and Other Muslim Girl Problems. Now, I also have my Kindle, which is going to tell me all sorts of cool things about what I'm reading. Because if you're like me, you don't remember what you're reading? I don't remember what I'm reading. I don't remember what the name of it is either. I don't remember the name. I don't remember the author. I remember nothing. All right. Now I can see that five people are watching. Either that or they're screaming in horror. Maybe both because I've never done this before and I'm probably super friggin' bad at it. So if you want to ask me a question, there's a little chat box. Now if you're actually on the Smart Pitches website looking at this, you can go over to YouTube or you can leave a comment and I will see it. I just have to keep refreshing comments, but I do that anyway. So if you're watching and you want to ask a question or you want to ask for a recommendation, I would love to hear from you. Eventually, I'm going to figure out how to do like a live conversation where people can just join in. But that was a little bit much for me today. So I'm going to pull up my reading list and I'm hoping that one of y'all will write a question or, 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 or ask me a question or um, ask trivia. I can do trivia. I'll probably be wrong. Questions are good. In fact, let me put my phone in the sound box. Hi! Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Somebody actually typed a comment. Woohoo! Hello! All right. So, I still suck at this, but I'm going to keep going. <laughs> All right, I just turned on the footage of my own stream, which is delayed from me by about 15 seconds. Uh... I look ridiculous. I cannot watch that. I can't watch myself. Yet I'm making you watch me. That makes me a giant asshole. So the other book, I'm actually rereading Pretty Face by Lucy Parker. Um, Pretty Face by Lucy Parker is book two in her 
sort of connected world. It's not a series, but, well, they move chronologically. Do you ever notice we need multiple words for series? Like, there's the series that you have to read in order, and then there's the series that are sort of interconnected, but there's a chronology that happens behind the scenes, and then there's just a bunch of books that are in the same world, and you don't have to read them in order, which is more rare. So maybe this is a series, maybe it's just interconnected, but Pretty Face is the book that comes after, or is going to be released after, uh, Act Like It, which, as you probably know, is one of my most favorite books ever in the history of the universe. Because I loved it. So in this one... The heroine is an actress, and she's typecast into a sort of bimbo, floozy role by a soap opera. She's got a high-pitched, breathy voice. She's blonde. She's curvy. And she's also very intelligent and a good actress, but nobody looks at that part. They're all looking at her superficial image. I swear it's based on Marilyn Monroe. And I also think there's another character in this book that was based on Maisie Williams from Game of Thrones, but that's entirely my theory. The hero is older than her. He's the director who hires her for a new play. And um, so he's her boss. And she is the daughter of a lord, a peer of the of peer of the realm. Is that what they're still called? I don't know. Either way, she's the daughter of a peer who cheated on his wife. So she's the very living evidence of his affair. So his wife does not like her. And her mother is a um, actress who uses her body to get ahead in a lot of ways she uses the relationships that she has to get ahead and doesn't take relationships and commitment seriously at all okay so she's in his play it's a huge step up for her to go to a a leading role in a theater production on the west end versus a television soap opera on ctv it's got to be ctv i'm 99 that's right yeah ctv The tension is that he is everything that she does not want for herself. He's older than her. He's her boss. Um, Everyone is going to assume that she slept her way into the role and that she's sleeping with a director to get ahead. And she's determined not to live up to the reputation that she's been given that she didn't earn. That was really because of the character she was playing on television. Um, In related news, I should never write cover copy or describe books because I think I just took like five whole minutes to describe this book. That's embarrassing, right? Anyway, the the best part of the book is the dialogue. It is the best part of the whole book is the dialogue. I dig it. Next on my list is, oh, I have three, three on my list. Um, I even draw a little calendar for my books. Isn't that sad? I'm so paranoid about my lists and the comments I make about books going public that I draw a little calendar. So anyway, let's see here. So I have finding, I wrote it down as finding feet. I Now I have to ask Amazon, what are you talking about? Oh, hang on. I should be not a jerkwad and give people links to things that I'm talking about, right? Right? Yeah. Duh. Man, I am a platinum level member of Fly by the Seat of Your Pants Airlines. Somebody's going to be like, this is the worst example of a live stream ever. She wasn't even prepared. Well, I'm always prepared to talk about books. Finding Feet. Cass Lennox. Now, I don't think this book is about actually encountering feet somewhere and then knowing what to do with them. Finding your feet. I wasn't sure if it was your, her, his, my, finding your feet, Cass Lennox. God, I even spelled Lennox wrong, bad. So I have not read this yet. That's next on the list, along with the book that I have written to, God, it's embarrassing. I'm like, I'm like embarrassing myself here. Diablo Lake 2. Diablo Lake Protected, which comes out on the 23rd, I think. Is the audiobook a different date? Nope, the 23rd. So I have that on the list of things to read because uh, werewolf, two, two rival werewolf families in a small town. It's like a combination of the Hatfields and McCoys, Westerns, werewolves, and heroines who don't take very much shit. Here for that. Diablo Lake Protected by Lauren Dane. Look, I even spelled it right. Yay me. And that's what I've got on the list for the rest of this month. Next month is Winter of the Gods, which is 
book two of a series where Artemis lives in New York, but she's greatly, all the Greek gods live on the earth, but they're all severely weakened because no one worships them anymore. And then I have a book called, this is, this is so embarrassing. I write down the title and I'm like, well, that's, that's my handwriting. I obviously wrote this down. Why did I write this down and not write down what it was? I mean, obviously it's a book and I wrote it down. Okay. Seriously, embarrassing. So embarrassing. No shame, whatever. Okay. So the other book that I have written down is Geek Arella. Geek Arella. Geek Arella? How do I say this? Geek Arella, right? Yeah, Geek Arella. All right, I'm going to write the title down. You tell me how you think, how you think it should be. Geekerella, right? Yeah, Geekerella. Um, it's a fangirl cosplay fairy tale, and um, I like those. Also, I got a an email from the author of Level Up, Kathy Yardley, um, that that series is now going to be published, I think, by Macmillan, which is so rad. Um, and I'm super excited about that because I really, really enjoyed that book. And if you want to read that one, it's right here. Okay. Now, I know that there are like four or five people watching, and I'm sure you're all still horrified. But do you have questions? Do you want recommendations? Do you want to say a thing? Do you want to tell me to stop because I'm really not good at this? No? Hello? Okay, that's cool. All right. So, in order to continue offering this weird ass, uh, all right, so here's the thing. All right. This is a minor first world annoyance, but I'm still annoyed, so I'm going to share it with you. So, yesterday, a book that we had on hold came in on the library, so I drove over to the library and picked it up. Now, another book that I have on hold has just been placed in the hold bin, so I have to go back to the library. Now, this is great. Our library system is awesome, and it's super robust, and it's got all these books I want to read, and I can borrow, like, buckets of graphic novels, which are really excellent and have great stories, but take me, like, 20 minutes to read, and so I don't want to buy or own them because I don't usually reread a lot of graphic novels. Borrowing from the library is friggin' rad, and, of course, I have to go back to the library now. That makes me sad. Okay, that's my minor rant for the minute. All right, who has questions? Questions, questions, questions. I want your questions. <clears throat> Are there any cats? No, no cats. This is, uh, this is sad because usually around this time of day they're walking around in front of me. Nope, no cats. Okay, so let's see here. What else did I promise to do? Do you have for me to read a book? I, okay, it's story time. I'm going to read a book. Here we go. Okay. This is... You ready? Right? Okay, thank you for the comment. Isn't it lovely how all the holds show up at once? Yeah, but they show up like day to day. Like yesterday was a hold, today's a hold, so I got to go back and forth. So anyway... All right, it's story time because I'm aiming to give you guys a nice place to hang out on the internet that isn't too stressful. Okay, so I'm going to be reading a story. Ready? We're going to be reading Five Little Gefiltas by Dave Horowitz. Such a nice book. Oh, hey. Hello. It's nice to see you. What are you? I hope you're needing something good. I have my cross stitch here. I might do that later, but the problem is I haven't figured out how to have a group chat, and I don't think you want to listen to me yammer while I cross-stitch, right? Okay, so let's read the story, because it's safe space time, and also I love this book. So in case you're wondering what book I am reading, Five Little Gefilte. Also, it's super rad. Rose is read that you made a channel so that you could hang out and chat with us, or you made, a, made an account. Thank you. You're so cool. I'm glad you're hanging out. Okay, so five little gefiltas. I think my eyes just crossed. If that was gross looking, I apologize. Okay, you ready? Okay. Five little gefiltas. Story time. One of my kids is going to come and be like, what are you doing? Okay. All right, so 
Five Little Gefiltas is written by Dave Horowitz, and it is dedicated to, I believe, his grandfather. And there's a picture of his grandfather in here. Uh, in 1920, third from the right, just before crossing the great ocean with his siblings. So there's Poppy, right there. Ooh. And he is third from the right, so that's him right there. Tiny little person. Look at this tiny little dude. Tiny little dude. And that girl is like, on the end, she is just like, I am not here for my brothers. I am. <laughs> you are totally cool. No question, Rose is red. All right. What's a gefilte? Gefilte fish is a traditional food popular with Jewish people all over the world. It's true. I don't personally like it, though. But don't go looking in the ocean for a gefilte fish. Hmm? There we go. Gefilte fish are balls made from several different kinds of fish. Pike, carp, and whitefish, to name a few. They're like matzo balls, but made out of fish. Feh! That's disgusting! So who's asking you to eat one? Now, on with the story. Here we have Bubby's homemade gefilte fish. Such a nice piece of fish. Mmm, so good. Five little gefiltes went out one day, out of the jar and far away. Maybe we should stay. What are you talking? If these are actual gefilte fish. I mean, you knew that, right? Mama gefilte cried out, Oy vey! But only four little gefiltes came back that day. Now, the great thing about this book is the little gefilters are actually hiding. There's, woo, I have to do this in a mirror image. There's one hiding right there. There you go. All right. Someone just came up the stairs. They're going to come in here and be like, what are you doing? Here we go. Four little gefiltes went out one day. They went to the theater and took in a play. Little Miss Matza today, now playing. Next week, Goldilocks and the Three Schmiers. This locks rocks. And now we're going to find out what happened. Mama gefilte cried out, Oy vey! But only three little gefiltes came back that day. And now we take a break for the play. Listen, if you come in, you're live on the internet. <laughs> You're not on camera. What do you need? Do you need something? Or are you just coming to see who I'm reading to? I'm reading to the whole internet because I'm a huge dork. Right now? Right now, yes. I Wait, hold on. I'll even tell you how many people are watching. I can tell you. It's like five or six, maybe? Mm, six! Six people are watching. And then I have a little chat over here where some Rose's Red is knitting and Mazelle's hanging out. Let's have them having fun on the internet. You're not on camera. Don't worry. What do you need? You just came to see who I was talking to? Yeah? No. no. What do you need? Um, I'm going to go check the mail. Do you want to go check the mail? Yeah. I don't think it's come yet. I haven't seen the mail truck. But you can go outside if you wish. Okay? I'm going to get back to reading my story. No, because the mail people came. I saw there was a mail truck there. Oh, cool. Go ahead. Go check the mail. It's fine. You don't have to ask my permission. Okay. Now, after that brief intermission, are you ready? Here we go. Back to the story. We're going to take a break in the story for the play. Little Miss Matza sat on her tuchus, eating a nice bowl of soup. Along came a spider who sat down beside her and frightened her right off the stoop. Boo! I tell you, I'm gonna plot. We take a break for the play in the middle of the book. I love this. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> Hi, Mikhail. I'm glad you like it because I'm making an utter fool of myself. But hey, it's for the common good, right? Yeah, any minute now, my husband's gonna get home from the, from the wine store and be like, what are you, do you need some wine? Yes, I do need wine. Okay, moving on. Three little gefiltes went out one day. They went for a swim in the great New York Bay. I do not advise that. Hooray! All right, this gefiltes fish right here is going to get like something terrible. Oh my God. Mama gefilte cried out, Oy vey! But only two little gefiltes came back that day. Oy, this sphinx, I'm totally schwitzing. I know, it's so humid. Two little gefiltes went out one day. They went to a deli and they crashed the buffet. Hey, those guys ain't matzo balls. Look, they crashed it. Hot kreplach, tasty kosher pickles, delicious knishes, such chutzpah. What a schnook. I wouldn't buy matzo balls that had been sitting out. That would be pretty gross. Mama gefilte cried out, Oy vey! But only one little gefilte came back that day. Waiter, there's a gefilte in my soup. 
Do not put gefilte in your soup. That's gross. One little gefilte went out one day and a big yellow taxi schlepped him away. Okay, now there's two great things about this page. One, schmata king. We got a lot of schmatas. Schmata is like a cloth you throw over something. And then the other is poppy's upholstery. Now, <laughs> thank you. It, the thing about Poppy's upholstery that's adorable is that the book is dedicated to his Poppy, so that's clearly his grandfather's store. Isn't that adorable? Okay. Oh, it's getting dramatic now. Here we go. Mama Gefilte cried out, Oy vey! But not a single Gefilte came back that day. Mama Gefilte is very sad. Here we go. Oi, 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 what Cirrus? They don't write, they don't call. Cirrus is trouble, by the way. Sad Mama Gefilte went out one day. She went to the park and she fetched the whole way. Oi, such Cirrus, they don't write, they don't call. She finally got tired and she sat on a bench. Aw, and the Gefiltes came back. Because each was a mensch. And look, she's quelling. Mensch is a person who's a good person, and quelling is like you're, you're bursting with pride and, and extremely pleased with yourself. And then there's a whole, whole glossary in the back. So if you want to practice your accents and your Yiddish, which I have like nine words of total, and in the back, Meshuggah. That means crazy. So yeah, that's my favorite book. Yay, Five Little Gefeltas. I can do more dramatic readings if you wish, because I've never gotten rid of all of our children's books. All right. And thank you for the compliment on my voices. I have a really good time with that. Okay. So, anybody got questions? Want a book recommendation? Hmm? Hmm? I'm waiting. All right. Check the comments. Anybody leaving a comment over here? No. Okay, cool. Good. So then all the comments are over here. Cool. All right. So I have been live for 34 minutes. That's exciting. And there's nine people now. Hi, all nine people. That's pretty rad. Uh, yeah. So there we go. Now you have to talk, except it's a one-way stream, so it's going to get really boring. Oh, wait. I can show you the man titty. You want to see the man titty, right? Okay. So this is my office. You can see I have, ooh, craziest book I've read recently. Oh, Lord. So I have a lady's pillow. And then, let's see if I can get this on camera without my giant head in the way. I have man titty. See? That's, uh, that's John DeSalvo in a hot pink toga of sorts. Um, and that was the original oil painting for a book cover. Someone from Kensington, Kate Duffy, sent that to me. She said, we're cleaning out the office and we found this and I think you might want it. Yeah, I want that. So I framed it. Now it's hanging in my office and I work beneath the man titty. There's a slight delay in the comments. Ah, no worries. Okay, craziest book I've read lately. Well, I have to go to my red list, which I also keep in a notebook because I'm a giant dork. Craziest book I read lately. All right, well... I started a young adult, like really, really, really young adult book. Like when back when young adult meant something different because young adult was a different thing. Um, it's super cute. Heist plot. Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. Okay, please stand by. All right, so I started reading this book and I will show you the Amazon listing because it's adorable. And I bought it from a Libris for a dollar but it's called the book dragon it's by don kushner and it was originally published a long ass time ago i'm going to say 1988 maybe 1987 and it's about a very small dragon who is the last of his kind and ends up in a monastery where a book of hours is being hand painted um, and a dragon in this world a dragon has to have a treasure and so he realizes that his treasure is this book. And the book, the story, moves through history as this dragon, who's very long lived, guards his book all through history. It's super cute. But that's probably one of the strangest books I've read lately because whenever I pick that up, it's incredibly charming and adorable. But at the same time, I'm like, this is a 
very different from, you know, the books that we used to read. Let's see, any other weird books that I have read? Hmm. 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 No, a lot of the books I've read lately I've really enjoyed. Although I can tell you that uh, Elise is currently reading something. She is reading a book. Let me make sure I have the title right. She is currently reading a book called Taken by the Alien Machine. That could be fun. That's definitely going to be bonkers. All right. So let's see. Oh, somebody wants me to send them the link. Okay. Craziest book I've read in a while. Hmm. Blank space, someone to love, ever the hunted. There hasn't been a book for me that I've looked at and been like, what the hell is happening here? I do not understand. Um, I can tell you what I've been listening to because it's awesome. And everyone should listen to this. If you need like, okay, bye, Christina Bell. I will, uh, I will answer your question. Okay. So if you are looking for a podcast that is adorable and friendly and positive, I am telling you that it is, it is like listening to uh, Leslie Nope and the character played by Rashida Jones, whose name just totally flew out of my head. It's like listening to them if they had a podcast about friendship. So Jen and Trin work for Cards Against Humanity, and their podcast is called Friendshipping. It is adorable. It's super positive, and it's so there's so much empathy and understanding, but also really, really good wisdom. Like a lot of the time, um, this one blew my mind because... My husband and I met in high school, and a lot of his friends are people he's known, we've both known since high school. And, you know, people grow in, apart in different ways, but I've noticed that men hold on to those friendships for a very, very long time. And even though they've grown apart, they still have that determination to remain connected, which I find really interesting because that's not how I think. So just listening to Trin and Jen talk about friendships and the evolving way that people behave and act so good and they're only like 20 to 30 minutes so you should totally totally listen to them they're just wonderful positive and loving and and, and the end result is everyone has problems with people and you can work it out also the theme song is fantastic now okay now i feel bad because christina had a meeting i'm sorry but i'm gonna answer your question all right heist romances which is like when Someone <laughs> someone has to steal a thing and you have to steal the thing to <laughs> you gotta steal the thing and, and look good doing it. And that's the essence of a heist. Okay. So the first thing about romance and heists is that a lot of the heist romances take place in historicals. Like the Joanna Bourne Spymaster series could be considered a heist romance, except that they are in they're they're spies in an actual war, so the stakes are a lot higher. With what I usually think of as a heist plot, it's you know the stakes aren't high, except that the thing they're going after is valuable. Like no one's at war or anything. So, most of the heist romances that come to mind immediately are historicals, and that doesn't really help anybody, which is super annoying. Now. There is two in my head, and of course I can think of the picture of the cover, but not the actual cover. Durr. Okay. Nope, this one's historical. All right. So Zoe Archer has a series called Nemesis Unlimited, which is a little bit like heist and a little bit like revenge romance, um, but... Paloma, I see your question. I'm on it. So Sweet Revenge is the first book in Nemesis Unlimited. And it's sort of a heist, but also sort of a revenge plot. Um, sweet Revenge. Also, the guy on this, uh, the guy on the cover is, like, really hot and has really nice chest hair and a really nice, like, muscular definition. Anyway, so the book starts 
when they break this guy out of prison. So there's a prison break, and then there's um, spying and hiding and trying to find out the dirt on this guy. Um, basically, there are a bunch of people who get revenge on aristocrats who get away with terrible, dastardly things and shouldn't. So they, they visit revenge upon them. It's pretty rad. Another series that you might really like, Christina, is the Blades of the Rose series, also by Zoe Archer. Um, my favorite was Scoundrel, but those books are a slightly paranormal version of Indiana Jones with more romance and less sexism. Oh, hey, Cynthia. To answer your question, Cynthia, I am using YouTube and an open source software that's called OBS. And I have to be able to find out what this is. What's this actually called? It was a, oh, it's open source. So I didn't have to pay for it, but it basically hooks up my webcam and then streams it onto YouTube once I tell it what the YouTube channel is, but it's all free. Um, and obviously I didn't have to work too hard because my face isn't red and I'm not angry at the computer. So super awesome. But thank you for asking. OBS, yes. Hang on, let me find a link to it. Oh, OBS Podcast. And OBS stands for, go me, Open Broadcaster Software. So you download and install that and you set up a live stream on YouTube and then you can stream directly to YouTube. It's pretty fly. Hang on one second. Let me manage. FYI, I'm streaming live on YouTube right now. My husband's going to get that text because I just saw his car come down the street. He's going to get that text and be like, what are you doing? I'm having fun on the internet, dude. Okay. Yes. Let me get back to my heist and recommendations. For, so with the Blades of the Rose, I think the first one is Rebel? Or maybe it's Warrior. See, this is why all books should have the same title so it's easy for me to remember them because I don't remember anything. Okay, so the Blades of the Rose series is four books and they are all sort of, they're adventure and heist and um, su slightly supernatural and they are so much friggin' fun. Let me post a link to the set of them. Of the Rose, Zoe Archer. Um, I was wrong. Warrior is the first one. Warrior, Scoundrel, Rebel, and Stranger. Now, I read Scoundrel first. I skipped Warrior, and I was fine, and I loved it. But they are, they are a combination of super strong women. They're incredibly feminist and brilliant characters. But Zoe Archer writes really good characters. If you've read her historicals, it's the same thing. And... There's all of this adventure and world travel and crazy inventions, and it's so great. And they take place all over the world. You should totally read them. I really like them a lot. There's not enough adventure romance in the world, basically. Okay, now there was another question I missed. What software? Oh, getting out of book funk. Oh, Paloma, I've so been there. Book funk is the worst. Okay. You are on a two week long historical romance binge with Tessa Dare. That's a good binge. That's a very good binge. I am extremely impressed. Good choice. Okay. So is the problem that you want to read more historicals, but they're not measuring up to Tessa Dare? Or is the problem that you want to read something else and they're not measuring up to Tessa Dare? Because I got to be honest with you, Tessa Dare is kind of a high bar. That's going to be hard. But if you can tell me what you're in the mood for, then I can make recommendations. So let me know. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see here. Now, of my historical recommendations, I have a whole page of them. I will pull it up on my computer. Hmm. Okay. So, I'm waiting for comments, rec lists. Okay. Here we go. So, I say so a lot. You know, when I edit the podcast, I can actually identify what um and so look like on the waveform. Like, oh, you say that a lot. I sure do. Nothing like editing your own voice to get used to your own vocal tics. All right, so, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, very, very little measures up to Tessa Dare. She is brilliant. And it's really hard when you finish a book that good and you're just like, what am I gonna do now? I can't top that. It's true, you can't top that. So here we go. Here are some historical recommendations. First, I would recommend the 
Teresa Romaine season four series, um, particularly the books that, and she is a great person. You are totally right. Uh, Cynthia Paloma says, I just want something that's grabbing and has an awesome OTP with an intense hero. Okay. I think I can help you out. Okay. So Teresa Romaine's season four series are all holiday romances and they take place during the Regency. My favorite is um, my favorite is the one in the white dress where she's facing away with you, away from you, and there's like a little bit of a flower or something. So which means that I have to pull it up on Amazon and look at the covers because I don't remember the titles. I am the worst library patron in the world ever. Horrible, horrible, horrible library patron. Okay, season for surrender. If you don't mind reading a uh, holiday romance, season for surrender by Teresa Romaine. Okay, the hero has a terrible reputation and he has an annual house party with two straight weeks of all sorts of wickedness and debauchery. But essentially what he's doing is creating a very lewd and rowdy found family around the holidays. He makes a bet that he has to persuade a very proper young lady who's having a season and is like right about on the edge of spinsterhood. He has to convince her to attend the house party and stay the whole time, even though she's known in society as having an impeccable reputation. Um, the thing I love about this book is that there are so many tiny little moments that later become hugely significant. Like there's a scene where they go collect mistletoe and for a contest at the house party, and it later becomes incredibly significant. Plus, they talk a lot in the library because he has a really awesome library. So if you like library romances, this is so good. Oh my gosh, I'm getting warm fuzzies just talking about it. Okay, let's see. Other historicals that I love. Hmm. Okay, Julianne Long's Penny Royal Green series is awesome. I love it a lot, but it's a long ass series. And the thing is, um, when you're when you're starting a series that long, it can get. Some of them are they're, they're a little uneven. Some of them are awesome. Some of them are good. None of them are bad. Like they're all good. Some of them are just like, like when you finish a Tessa Dare book and you're just like, oh my god. <laughs> I can't read any more words. What is this? That's not happening. So the ones that I love most of Penny Royal Green are What I Did for a Duke and uh, How the Marquess Was Won. I have a lot of fond memories of those, of, those, uh, of those books, reading them while I was traveling. So Penny Royal Green is also awesome. I am going to presume that if you know about Tessa Dare Paloma, you also know about Courtney Milan. But if you don't... Uh, she's awesome and you would really like her historicals my personal favorite of hers is actually an older title let me find it it's the one where she's in a dress right so she's wearing a dress and um she's in a dress and it's big because it's a historical so it's the brothers sinister series i'll send you a link to the to the boxed set the brothers sinister series follows a set of uh, brothers, obviously. The first one is um, the governess affair, and then the Duchess War, a kiss for midwinter, the heiress effect, the countess conspiracy, suffragette scandal, and talk sweetly to me. So that's a whole series that is all awesome. And then there's another series, the Turners. All right, the Turners are totally my catnip. Love this series. So Courtney Milan's Turners are brothers and they take place um, in the upper and middle classes. The first one is about a guy who sues uh, to regain a dukedom that should have been his because the about to die Duke was um, married twice. Oops. So her, the heroine is uh, his how did this work out? The heroine is his daughter, is the Duke's daughter, but they're not half brother and sister because that would be gross. And I don't remember the, the intricacies. It's totally awesome. Unveiled is the first one. Unlocked, unclaimed, and unraveled. Unraveled is awesome. Unlocked is awesome. Unclaimed is excellent. And unveiled is my favorite of all of them. So those are also books that will just knock you over with their the goodness of them. <laughs> Let's see. You would probably also like Sarah McLean. Um, I'm a I'm a fan of her first one, which is Nine Rules to Break When Romancing a Rake, and that is 
that might really appeal to you, Paloma, because that's about someone who has decided she has no more shits to give and she's going to do scandalous things. And there's a guy who's clearly very attracted to her who's like, really, let's not do this. This is a bad idea. Um, so, yeah, you would probably really like that. And I'm looking at my historical romance master list here. Tessa Dare. Oh, OK. I'm going to do one more. Um, Kate Noble. Kate Noble is a television writer and a romance author. And she wrote a, a book called Summer of You, which is my favorite. I love that book. Her historicals are sort of the meandering, quiet attraction of dialogue that brings people closer and closer together. And even if nothing massively dramatic is happening, it's still so interesting when they all start talking to each other. I'm a sucker for dialogue, though. So I hope that helps you get over your slump. Um, yeah, it's really hard to follow up Tessa Dare. I agree. Super hard. Super, super hard. Okay. I'm going to have to go in a few minutes. But is there any other questions or comments or requests? Any other requests? You can write the requests in the little box. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Is there anything else I wanted to tell you? Hmm. You want to know what's coming up on the website? Sure you do. It'd be like being psychic. OK. So the website has its own calendar, because that's how I stay organized. So here we go. Oh. Yeah, you're welcome, Paloma, anytime. And you can always email me. I'll give you my email address, Sarah, at. I can write Smart Bitches Trashy Books really fast on a keyboard now. It's been a while. OK, so here's what's coming up on the website this week. OK, on Tuesday, we have another recap of The Bachelor from Elise. And I will tell you that behind the scenes of this, unless you listen to the podcast today, which we also talked about this, she came to me in our Slack channel and was like, what would you think about a Bachelor recap? And my first, my first reaction was, why? Why? Why would you want to do a Bachelor recap? It's um, not my favorite thing, reality TV. I'm not really a fan. And uh, <laughs> I don't really do cringe television very well. And I'm really bad at watching people like make fools of themselves like for my entertainment. Oh, it's just I'm cringing now. No, 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 no. But she's like, no, 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 no. I'm convinced that nobody wants to win and that all the women want to be friends. And I was like, I wish to hear all about this. Her Bachelor recaps will come on Tuesday morning. She writes them very quickly on Monday night and is usually drinking while she watches. So the recap is like, ooh, it's so fun. That'll be Tuesday morning because she writes those on Monday night. We have a squee from the Keeper Shelf coming up on Monday, which is when um, people like you right there tell me about a book that you love, like the book that you're never getting rid of, that you have multiple copies, that is your favorite book ever. Like I just moved last year and called my romance uh, collection down from like this to that. Like they take up one little tiny shelf in my closet. Because once you have to pay a person to move your books, suddenly it's a whole different way of evaluating them, especially if you have them in digital. So Squee from the Keeper Shelf is all about the books that you really, really love that you will not let, like not get rid of ever, ever, ever. Yeah, Rose is right. I'm with you. I'm not, a, I'm not good on reality television, but I'm also bad at watching television. Like I'm genuinely, um, I'm genuinely mistrustful of TV writers. Oh, yes. Mazelle is right. House party romances. Yes, we need more of those. I love them. So here's the thing with me and TV. I think I've talked about this on the podcast. I don't trust television writers because they don't actually want to reach an end. They would actually like to reach syndication, which is like 200, 300, 400, lots of episodes so that they can sell them into syndication and make lots of money. I totally get it. That's the goal. But if you're not writing with the end in mind, then I am not interested and I don't trust you. I don't trust television writers who don't have an ending in mind because, I mean, how many television shows have you watched where it's like, okay, everything's great and then it's terrible. I'm with you, Cynthia. I don't watch The Bachelor. I love the recaps. I was so wrong when I when I was like, wait, why would we do this? Why wouldn't we do this? It's so great. I'm so glad you like them as much as I do. So I don't trust television writers, which means I'm very bad at watching television. I just realized I'm having like five conversations at once. Chinese drama. Is this like telenovelas where there's like a plot and like a, like a, like a beginning, middle and end? I love those. 
I'm also told that I need to get into K-dramas because they have a beginning, middle, and end. And I watched one that was super good called The Healer. Oh, hold the phone. Okay, if you like heist. Mm -mm, hang on just a second. I'm so freaked out, I can't even Google. Hang on. All right, so The Healer is a K-drama. It's a Korean drama. The Legend of Zen Huan. I'm here for this. Thank you, Rose is Red. Okay. The Healer. Where can you watch The Healer? I'm pretty sure you can watch Healer on Crunchyroll, but I will give you a link to the Wikipedia. If you like, uh, if you like heist stuff, Healer is a K-drama about a guy who has super, super, um, <laughs> I do love telenovelas. Um, so Healer is about this guy who has super, super specific skills in terms of self-defense and um, basically beating up large, slow-moving bad guys on camera in a way that looks cool. And he is connected to all of these different people through a picture that he doesn't remember. Um, he doesn't remember wh who the people all are in the picture, but he knows he's connected to them. And then he starts figuring out who he is, who, and there's this other there's like five different stacks of story but the fight scenes are awesome it's got a really really long um mystery element and there's a great romance although the heroine can be really dippy sometimes she's it's so good the only thing is when i'm watching tv i'm also doing something else like i'm cross-stitching or i'm working on something sort of half paying attention and with a k-drama or something with subtitles i can only do that because i'm reading the subtitles so i can't like watch five healers in a row because my brain's like that's too much wording now we need to go half do something so i love that one um there was something else i was going to say what was the thing i was going to say oh yes <laughs> um another feature we have coming up this week is stuff we like so the gift guides were so popular and people liked them so much that I decided I would do a monthly gift guide type post of things that we like, things that we've discovered, and also things that y'all have recommended to me, which is really cool because you guys have impeccable taste. I don't know if anyone's told you that, but you have great taste in things. So the stuff we like post will be Wednesday, and that's going to um, show off different things that are useful and fun and adorable and that are available for you to purchase because I like to enable everyone else's bad impulse control because I have none yep so that is what's coming up this week and we have a giveaway going on right now which is pretty face which I mentioned earlier on in the cast what live stream webcast thing that I'm yammering on the internet yeah that's what this is uh, if you would like to enter to win an arc of pretty face that would be an advanced reader copy uh, the <laughs> you can win one of three arcs and read an exclusive excerpt and uh that's pretty awesome i have a cat oh fat large cat okay so if you listen to the podcast you know that one of my cats um pooped in the middle of an episode it was great fun that's the one who's currently demanding my attention under the desk maybe he's telling me it's time for his medicine probably is this time for your medicine yes okay so all right, my voice is starting to hurt and I have to go eat food now. And I've been, oh my God, this was a whole hour. I'm so cool. Okay, so I will try to do this again. Um, thank you for hanging out with me and I hope you have a really good rest of your day. And if you need a quiet, quiet place to go read a book, please always feel free to email me for a book recommendation. I am always happy to help you find good books to read. So take care of yourselves and uh, I will talk to you soon. Bye.